So you've got a sequence of uh, winning times for the Olympics that we need to model. Um, here I've got weights, so I'm going to select from 1 to 30. There have been 30 Olympic Games since 1896. Right-click Create List of Points to plot it as a graph. You've got to try and fit a function to these data points. Um, GeoGebra can do that for you, so I'm going to type fit. As you can see, they offer an exponential, a line. Um, I could do a power one if I wish. I'm going to go for a polynomial because I think this looks a bit like a cubic. So cubic and list one always because we're doing list one unless you've made two lists by accident. The biggest power of a cubic is three. So I type in three and then GeoGebra automatically graphs me a cubic to fit that data. It doesn't fit too, too well. Here, close-ish, these sections not so well at all. And this section that's going downwards, whereas that seems to be sort of stabilizing. If I then double click on here and go to object properties, and show label because I want to see what the function of that curve is. It's just appeared down there. I can drag that into view. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction. 1984 is always blank. I've put predict on all of these sheets. So um, here's the equation of that graph that Gigi was plotted. Instead of X, we put B25 because that is the cell where the data we want is going to be. So there you look, see B25. So I put in that in place of X. And it's going to predict 468.5 as a winning weight in 1984. So 468.5. And then this column will tell me how far off the actual winning weight I am. So it's a good way to get a goodness of fit. You're going to do a 2012 prediction thereafter. Alternatively, however, you might feel that it doesn't fit the GeoGebra one quite as well as you'd like it. So you're going to make up your own function. I've gone for a cubic with some parameters here, A, B, and C. Um, so I go back to that model. And those A, B, and C fit to these sliders. And there's a cubic, but it's not quite where I like it. Um, I'm going to change the steepness by changing the parameter A. Uh, I can translate it left and right by changing the parameter B, up and down by changing the parameter C, until I get a model that roughly fits what I'd like. And again, I can make a prediction for 1984. Um, that was the old prediction. You can make a new prediction here. Um, alternatively, this is, if you look at the history of weightlifting, there's sort of two different sections. Uh, the section up till the 21st Olympics, and then something happens and that makes this section different. So a piecewise function might be more appropriate. So here I've made a piecewise function, and I've defined the domain as going from 0 to 21 for that first section, and the 22nd to the 30th Olympics has a different function. And if I enter those in here, they're not correct. I didn't want to give the game away. Uh, up to you to find the correct ones. But just to show you how you can get a piecewise function for the two different sections of that graph and it might be more appropriate in this case. You can see here I've actually got the coordinates of the point. If I grab this, I can move the graph. Um, you can do that just by right-clicking and reveals the coordinates. Mathematicians do do this, as do scientists, to give them a prediction of what's going to happen in the future. Um, they predicted Bolt's winning time wouldn't happen until 2030. And this is with no reference whatsoever to the physiognomy of um, humans. They predicted what they think the limit of winning times is. And you can see it doesn't go lower than 9.4. And that's just based on a mathematical analysis. There are physical websites as well. Your turn now to um, predict 2012. Let's see which of you is going to be best. Um, and maybe have a sweepstake on who's most accurate.